Mondelez just out with its earnings moments ago, posting a beat on the top and bottom line. The stock's higher by about 1% or so on the results. For more on the numbers, let's bring in Mondelez chairman and CEO Dirk Vandeput, who joins us for a CNBC exclusive interview. Dirk, welcome back. Good to see you. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Hi Wilfred. So it, it looks like a very in-line quarter, I'd say, relating to margins and, and profits and sales. Talk to us about what you're seeing from consumers around the world right now as we are sort of in this limbo period getting out of COVID, so that hurts the at-home business, but, but getting back into normal life. What does that mean for snacking? Well, first of all, consumers uh, are getting more confident. They, they're feeling better about their lives uh, around the world, I would say. Uh, they, they can see how the vaccines are helping them. They can get a better feel for their personal finances. Their mobility is coming back. Um, so overall, we can clearly see that. And mobility coming back means that they're going to snack a little bit more when they're out and about going to work or going to school and so on. So that helps our markets. The other thing that we see, though, is that the time that the consumers spent at home, which went up quite a bit during the pandemic, that remains. The average consumer around the world spends about 15 percent more time at home than they did before. And it happens to be that our categories, biscuits and chocolate, uh, are also uh, something that is more uh, consumed at home. So we see our categories around the world uh, really have accelerated during the pandemic, but it's, it's continuing. And uh, that, of course, is, is very good for us. And on top of that, our market share versus where it was in 2019 remains high. We are up uh, or sustained increase of market share in 75 percent of our markets. So overall, good news on snacking, I would say. Margins were down a bit it, in line with expectations. What are you seeing and experiencing with regard to supply chain costs, issues, any shortages, anything like that? Oh, yes. We, I mean, you must have uh, had a, an earful in the, with the different earnings, but uh, it's quite, uh, quite extraordinary what's going on, and uh, you've heard it everywhere. What we are seeing, particularly related to us, is uh, we see the commodity prices uh, higher than you would expect. Uh, we see particularly oils uh, also, packaging is up, and then transportation. Not only are the costs up, sometimes 70, 80 percent in the U.S., uh, but there is a shortage of drivers and trucks. So it's very difficult to um, keep our clients uh, well stocked. Um, uh, our own shelf availability is nowhere near where we would like it to be. So that's having a, a big effect uh, on us. Uh, the reaction to that, of course, is trying to limit the range of products that you sell so that at least that limited range, you can keep it in stock. Um, we are also trying to uh, offset some of those costs through pricing, uh, revenue growth management, uh, reduction of promotions uh, to absorb those extra costs. And then overall, we are uh, trying to find more long-term uh, solutions for some of those transportation issues, like starting our own uh, shipping routes and uh, on, I mean, trucking routes in the U.S. Uh, the, the problems are worse in the U.S. than in the rest of the world. But you can, I can feel it uh, almost everywhere around the world, I would say. That, that's so interesting that it, it's most pronounced here. I mean, uh, is it going to be also most prolonged here? And, and to what level of uh, a price increase might it, might it lead to? Well, what we certainly are seeing is that the level of uh, growth uh, of, uh, in our input costs, which was significant in 2021, is not going to slow down in 2022. It's, it's higher, I would say. Not a lot, but it's higher. So we're looking at input cost inflation of about 6% for next year. Um, as a consequence, you are going to see um, uh, price increases. Um, we, at the moment, are looking at uh, starting off 2022 with about a 7% price increase in the U.S. And then we'll have to see what happens to those different costs uh, during the year if another price increase would be needed. U.S. numbers were a little light on the on organic revenue growth, Dirk. What are you seeing in this market as far as sales that, that you're not seeing everywhere else around the world where you saw some pretty strong growth? Well, um, you have to look at the U.S. on a two-year CAGR, I would say, because last year the U.S. was outstanding performance, uh, very high growth in snacking. So comparing to last year is a little bit... Uh, um, it's probably not the best comparison. If you compare to 2019, a two-year CAGR 
uh, our business in the U.S. is up uh, close to 4%, and so on a yearly basis. So that's, that's very strong. Now, having said that, um, we do see an effect of what I was talking about, those transportation issues, which are giving us problems to keep our clients in stock, and that's affecting our sales. And then we had uh, some strikes in, uh, in our plans, uh, which have all been resolved now, but that is also affecting our top line. So those are the three reasons why the U.S. looks a little bit off this quarter.